Okay, so I started a new video because the other one was, I realized, um, not horizontal. So, they say buy tools. This is my tool I made. It's Unistrut, all thread, and some nuts. Uh, this is going to be my 456 clutch. And I got this with holes in it so that, you know, I can do pretty much with the 100 or $200 tools uh, will do. And I don't have to pay for them. And check out my snap ring pliers. I made these, got these at Harbor Freight for like, uh, they were like nine bucks, I think. Because this snap ring is impossible to do any other way. And my snap ring is in, as you can see. All right, so that pack of frictions you saw earlier, or just a few seconds ago, actually, um, I brought them home, soaked them all in transmission fluid. They've been soaking for eh, a couple hours now. So I got all my steels. This is going to be my 456 clutch. Uh, it's going back in here. 456 done. All right, so now I'm going to install my front planet set into the other side of the 456 clutch. Use a little bit of trans gel to dab each of these little posts right there so it stay in there. Then I'll insert it in there and this 456 assembly will be completely done. Action. So I will always also take trans gel and I will pack these bearings a little bit, not too much. I don't know if I should do that or not. It doesn't say anywhere in any of the books whether I should do that. I can't find any information on whether I should pack this. My only concern is that if I put too much trans gel in this transmission, it's going to mix and thicken the overall amount of fluid, cause problems. So hopefully that won't happen. Okay, so it is also important, I have heard, for these sealing rings, these Teflon rings, to uh, be tight. Yeah, be quiet. Okay. Yeah, so it's important for these Teflon rings to be tight. Otherwise, in the transmission, they will, uh, you know, it'll cause problems when you put them back in. So, someone online uh, gave me a good idea. Wrap electrical tape around it, let it sit, and that will kind of compress them back in. All right, so this is what it looks like after I've wrapped them. I have wrapped the shit out of them, too. Uh, so, I did maybe like eight passes all the way around them, and as I was doing that, I put a lot of tension on them. So... Whenever I'm ready to take these off, we'll see if they're a little tighter. So, if you follow the directions in the book, you go with your wavy plate first, then a steel friction, steel friction, steel friction, steel. You got five of each. Then you go in with your backing plate and then your snap ring. Next, I'm going to pop out this uh, snap ring down under those clutches I just removed to pull out this. This is a spring, com spring compressor. Yeah. And then the piston rests underneath that. All right, so here is that uh, clutch removed. Got my new clutch right here. I'll put some uh, trans gel on it and put it back in. All right, so as soon as it's back in, so one thing that is uh, important, this snap ring is a bit. There's really, if you don't have the snap ring pliers for it, then big $200 tools, you just gotta manhandle it in there. All I really wanted to show y'all is this has a bevel on it. If you look right there, you can see it. Anyways, that bevel has to go to the top. Also, before you install it, make sure that the groove for the snap ring, the bottom of it, is flush with the top of your center support. If it's not, then your center support is not all the way down where it needs to be. Like that right there. Okay, snap ring is in, and using just these big, long needle nose and big flat head, I was able to uh, finagle it down there. Just always remember, keep the bevel up, and never put your fingers in there where they're going to get pinched, or they will. 